Hello, today I will be talking about the Ford Fulkerson algorithm that is used to compute the maximum flow in a flow network. A flow network is a directed graph, g, comma, v, g of v, comma, e, where each edge from u to v has a capacity value, c brackets u, comma, v, and a flow, f brackets u, comma, v, where the flow must always be less than or equal to the capacity of the edge. This is an example of a directed graph which has both a source get represented by the S and a sink represented by the T and four other vertices represented by the numbers 0, 1, 2 and 3. The capacity of each edge can be seen by the numbers next to that edge so 24 here, 11 here, 8 there and so on. And these are the maximum flow, the maximum number of units that can flow from a, along an edge. So the maximum flow in units from the source to vertex zero is 24. In order to calculate the maximum flow throughout the entire network, you must add all some augmented paths, that is, any path where you can take units from the source to the sink by following these edges and not exceeding their capacities. And you, when you have used, repeatedly done this and updated the capacities, so if you move five units from the source to vertex zero, you would have to update the capacity, the capacity to 19 and then add a new flow from zero back to the source of the value of five, so that the entire total capacity along the edge was retained. This is shown as one, one augmented path in this scenario is to take as many units as possible to source zero, so you could try and take 24 to source to vertex zero and then realize the maximum you can move from there is 15 units from vertex zero down to vertex two. And then these 15 units can be moved from vertex two across to vertex three and vertex three up to the source. This is shown on this diagram here where the new flow values, the new, sorry, the new capacities are shown via these red arrows which are the, the numbers are now the old capacities minus the 15 units that you have taken along them to the source. And these 15 units are shown flowing back from the sink, sorry, um, back along the vertices into the source. This is so that you always still have the correct total capacity shown for each edge in the graph. So now we want to make another augmented path using the new data to get more units from the source to the sink. One possible path for doing this is to take as many units as possible from the source to unit zero. Um, so if we try taking nine to there, we can't take any units down here as the capacity is now zero. It's all been used up last time. So we'll take as many units as possible from vertex zero to vertex one. The maximum there is five as that's the capacity of this edge. So we'll take five units along there and then as the capacity of this edge is very large, we'll take them straight down into the sink. This is shown update, with updated values on here. So the path is again shown in red with the new capacities um, being the old ones minus the five units moved along and the flows back towards the source updated to reflect the five more units that have been flowing back to the source. This is best shown here where you had the 15 units before five new units so you now have 20 units to flow back into the source along there. Right from here if we want to try and make a new augmented path it would seem wise to try and get rid of all these four units that are flowing that we have four units capacity that are still on this edge. Unfortunately that's not possible as there is no path from vertex zero to either vertex one, two, three or the sink with any capacity left on it they have owned due to the zero capacity left on both these lines from previous units flowing. So we'll try and make a new augmented path from the source along to vertex two and from there on towards, towards the sink. So if we try taking all 11 units there, we could then take all 11 units from there along to vertex three because the capacity there is greater than the capacity there. And then we can take, but from there we can only take seven units up to vertex one due to the capacity there, but they can all flow into the sink due to the large capacity on that edge. This is shown in this diagram here. Once again, the capacities have been updated and the flows have been updated. 
So the flows back to the sink have had seven added to them along that path. And the capacities towards the sink have had seven taken off them to reflect the lo lower capacity remaining there. So from here, we can try still try and remove these four units of flow, because remember, those four are stuck now. They can't get along this path. So we can take these four units down to vertex two. And from vertex two, we can see they can all flow along this edge here to vertex one. And from vertex one, they can still flow down this edge into the sink. This can, the final upgraded version will look like this, where if you compare it to the original directed graph, each you can see each vertex. So, for example, vertex from the source to vertex two, in this case, is 11 plus zero, matches up with the 11 here. And from two to three is five plus 22, matches to the 27 along there. So now, in order to calculate the maximum flow, now you have no more possible augmented paths along this route, you must simply put the flow from the sink back to another vertex over the total possible capacity of that edge. So in this case, from the sink back to vertex 1, the flow is 16, but the total capacity is 29, as there is still the 13 spare flowing from 1 to t. And therefore, you would write on a new graph, 16 over 29. This will show anyone who needs to see it exactly how many units have been have flown along an edge and how many it was possible, if needed, to flow along that edge. From this, it is very easy to work out the maximum flow, as it is just the flow into the sink, which is the numerator of the two values flowing in, so 15 plus 16, which is 31. Now just to check you've done, you've used the algorithm correctly, you should always check that the values flowing into the sink equal the values flowing out of the source, so 20 plus 11 does equal 31, and therefore this is working correctly. And therefore we can confidently say we have found the maximum flow of this director graph by added, using multiple augmented paths to f in order to do so. Yeah. Now the time complexity of the forward Fulkerson algorithm is of the order of the max flow times number of edges as in the worst possible case there will be an augmented path along every e where one unit will move along every edge every time giving the or an order of e times by the maximum flow. Thank you very much for listening. That was my description of the Ford Fulkerson algorithm.